bam, bam, ba, down. Theme song. Captain Annie's log, stardate 308. The power problems continue to be a uh, problem, but there is, there's more going on on this ship. As we are uh, settling into, uh, thanks for the comments, by the way, from uh, like Greg Wurezko and Mel Tarr and stuff who were, were commenting. And somebody pointed out that this is actually a very, very small star. So we're actually not getting very much power output on our solar panels from this whole area. This region might be an entire region of power problems. But that's not the main thing I'm concerned about. The main thing I'm concerned about is in the last episode, it was brought to my attention uh, by Hein, uh, Hein Bagaluth, hopefully I'm saying that right, uh, that a bunch of slaves tried to run to me for, uh, to rescue, to get their, to get their freedom, essentially. And, uh, I believe they were all shot down. I believe that was that first onslaught of people coming at me that didn't really seem to have guns, maybe. Or maybe they were forced to do it. I need to check for slave collars. I'm not really sure how to stop them, though, uh, from coming at me. Like, at some point, I've got to stop them. But... It was an unnecessary casualty. An unnecessary casualty in the war against slavery. I almost said against slaves. Like, I'm not at war with slaves. I'm at war with, you know, people that do slaves. Greg Juarez's co. also left a comment. Power-wise, invest in batteries. That'll re reduce the issues because, yes, as you can see, we are very much in a low-energy uh, sector. Constant power problems plague us all over the place. However, uh, you know, Greg, is this not enough batteries for you? We've got batteries all over the place. I thought this was enough. Well, we're trying. Um, I do need to invest in more batteries over here is probably what he's saying. Uh, this area, I did, I have installed a few batteries to help with some things. Uh, there's not that many solar panels, but yeah, I guess like I also installed this power generator uh, to help kind of uh, deal with the problem. So the Starlighter here is generating 36, consuming 39, so it's not ideal, but things, you know, power does tick down a little bit. I don't know if I want to stick around and trade here, because as you can see, things are not going amazing. So we may need to actually, let's power these things down. Uh, stop those. Let's ta turn those off and let's uh, turn this thing off. We don't need that powered up. Uh, we don't, we, we can turn off some of the, we can, you know, it's time to do some power saving around here. Captain Annie has decided to, to put us into a power saving mode just because uh, where we're at. Oh, that was a long save freeze, I guess. Where we're at now is not the time to be worried about too many things. Now on board this ship, a lot of uh, logistics are still going on. I was warned uh, by, that Jedediah has the um, has the uh, uh, clumsy trait uh, by Istvan. So let's go take a look at that. Um, skills, chemical engineer, he's clumsy. He's accident prone to 12%. His botany is three, but maybe we should go into this here and think about Jedediah's, uh, you know, what he does. Botany, level three, let's turn medical off. Apparently that's okay. Thanks for taking us there. Let's turn medical off. Let's turn mining down to, to uh, off as well. Just don't leave the ship. Let's put logistics up. It doesn't really matter. Research industry is okay. We could just leave it like that, but mainly uh, a Jedediah's job is going to be to do logistics. Now of the ships that have arrived, I don't know. Let's be, let's not leave without at least asking what they have. We are 16,000 doubloons rich here. So we might as well, um, get like a 10 stack. Oh, actually, no, we won't be able to. Okay, let's find out. We're going to test. We're going to take this 10 stack and see if the four remain. So accept, and let's do that trade again. All right, uh, over to the uh, fourchette this time to keep their oxygen uh, suppliers running. Oh, wait, is that the not, not the right ship? Was it this one? Yeah. Okay, so I guess that's gone. That That is no longer a bug uh, that I need to be like wary of or even advertising is even a bug. Let's give him a few of those and one of these. Do I have any plastic available? I'd like to get back into producing plastic, but I can't seem to get on top of my logistics on board the Starlighter. So we'll sell some, though, and get 437 of their doubloons. Meanwhile, the civilians, what do they have for us? Civilians, we need some water. As always, we are always on the hunt for water. Even though we have quite a lot, I am taking heed to some of the comments I've been given in the past, which say, don't even think about... Uh, not buying water. When you're in your late game and you have this many crew on board both your ships, like, what is our whole fleet? 
I mean, I don't know how many it is. I don't want to sit here and count them all, but the point is we have a lot of people. Maybe not, like, you know, an insane amount. The Starlighter apparently has zero of both of these, but that's okay. Do they have energy rods? Wait, what happened to the Starlighter's energy rod supply? Oh, do I have to manually manage their energy rod supply? This is bad news, bears. We gotta, we gotta get some energy rods over there immediately. Let's let's send over like um, thirty of them, and let's make sure that we're making. Where's my energy refinery? So we gotta turn that back on here. In fact, I probably shouldn't have turned it off to begin with. We have 114 energium. Let's make sure our yeah priority highest. So it might not be at a good spot. Maybe we need to move it back down here. Uh, let's do that now. We have a bit of time. Let's move it to here. Hold down the V key. Make sure it's not in the way of anything. I think that's a more, uh, a higher, uh, efficiency spot to have it because our, yeah, the power production. So they don't have to walk all the way to this end of the ship here. So that's good. Let's get this job construction and Cassia has been applied, uh, has applied to the job and, and she got it. Good for her. Meanwhile, the advanced assembler, we can leave that off and we'll leave this off. Uh, to conserve at least a little bit of power. Critical resources is low. Fertilizer on the full shit. We don't need it. And uh, Hyperium Energy am low on this ship here. Actually, on the Starlighter, let's go here. And you don't need to tell me. Don't notify me at all about that stuff because we have the raw resources being processed over here. So I'm not too worried about that. And actually, don't warn me about fertilizer on the full shit. Whew. Slowly, we're getting it all dealt with. There we are. So now that, well, that warning can go away. Thank you. That looks a little better. We just have some overwhelmed logistics, but hey, this is solid content. When do we not have overwhelmed logistics? Captain Annie orders the powerful vessels to boot up their equally powerful engines, and we take flight, looking for some more adventure. I notice that the Starlighter is also not mass supported, so we'll see that here. Yeah, that's a fairly lower, even for usually uh, how much she can do. We're going to land in this sector, and it's going to be just an absolute party of ships. Uh, we're going to get that chemical stuff, which is obviously very important, and keep moving on. Hopefully, we're getting a little more. Uh, uh, hopefully, we're getting a little more, uh, um, you know, power. We're a little closer to this dying sun. But let's go check out this. Uh, let's go check out this outpost and see what we can. See what we can buy, see what trade we can do while we're here. We come out of warp near the CB Ad Hoc Conglomerate. We're at a relationship of 40 with them. I think we should try to improve our relationship. And then over here, the Military Alliance. Good Lord, look at this nasty ship. That thing can pack a punch. But it also brings up another question, which was brought up on my uh, uh, channel of, why don't we have a uh, military ship? Why don't we have a gunship able to do some firing? And I think the reason is because who wants to sit around in a protracted war when we can get in and get out by just boarding their ship? So obviously we're going to buy all of this water. We're going to send a 10 stack over there. Then we're going to buy another... Uh, we're going to buy the rest of it and send it over to the Starlighter. Even though she is a little heavy right now. That's okay. She's had a lot to eat. Uh, and you know what? We should probably buy that ice. So let's go ahead and buy that ice. Now, the critical thing here is going to be that I need to get back on the road uh, of making money. In fact, let's see what we can sell to these folks here. New trade. They've got 7,800 doubloons. Let's try to get some of those doubloons. Like, what are things that we make quite a lot of that we can sell? We have, we're very low on that, so we're going to need to sell some of that. Why don't we sell, like, a stack of this gold here? Um, and now I think they're packed for trades for now. So let's keep that. But in the meantime, let's go talk to the Military Alliance and see what they want to do with the full shit. Any trades they want to do over here? Let's get that 12 stack. And uh, let's sell them some. They don't really care about any of these resources that we have plenty of. They like hull, so we'll give them some hull. That should be worth more, because obviously I'm not selling it, so it's worth more to me. And let's sell some of these. Let's sell all those hull blocks. No, let's not do Let's keep some of those. And let's sell uh, one assault rifle. I think we have the plastic that we should probably start thinking about doing more of that, like producing some goods. Um, let's sell some uh, infra blocks. No, let's sell some of this crap. So they don't have much money. We're making. Uh, we're gonna take a slight. We're gonna give them a bargain of four space doubloons. We're gonna get seven hundred from them. So that's not bad. And eventually the cultists will be here, but hopefully we don't need to stick around that long. 
In the meantime, food supplies are doing okay. I had a little discussion in the con in the chat there with uh, Mel Tar, who was having issues with why we go through so many nuts and seeds and and uh, as, uh, and meat. Uh, and I believe it's this button here. Compensate for missing ingredients. So we're going to turn that off and see if it does, in fact, lower our consumption of nuts and seeds and lead to a sort of a boost of that stuff. Um, and again, worst case scenario, we still have the algae producers around. One of the best additions to this game, or at least for casuals, filthy casuals like me. So thanks, Meltar, for doing all that looking into it and deciding that it was, in fact, compensate missing ingredients. I don't know. I'm, I'm pushing people too hard on this ship because it looks like somebody dumped their meal uh, to go back to work. Well, I applaud their hard work. What kind of items are we dealing with here? Nuts and seeds, biomatter, artificial meat. Yes, we have a lot of stuff. We just don't have enough. Good Lord, we do not have enough um, uh, logistics people here. Now, what are you, are you accepting any bio waste? You're not accepting any bio waste. And neither are you. So the bio waste is. Oh, we got meteoroids coming in. The bio waste is going to be a problem. I'm wondering if we can get some uh, storage in here and at least give it a spot. We could put one right there. And for the time being, we could have this allow bio waste. Uh, have a, have a no rule on that. So hopefully, Jedediah will catch up on some of that. In the meantime. I can, oh, I should take this off red alert, and we should get our shields up to at least a yellow alert so that they get replenished uh, after the meteor strike. So it's kind of nice to watch the meteors just bouncing off of our shields. It kind of makes me feel cozy. It's kind of like a like a, a snowy cabin in the rain. You know what I mean? It just feels kind of like that. Uh, the meteoroids are done, so I'm actually going to move this, uh, something that I always wanted to do. I wanted to move this over to here. Um just to give things a little more symmetry. And then we can get some guns up here if we wanted to, but like I said before, it, it, we're wasting resources on a prolonged gunfight when I could just have all my stormtroopers, you know, battle their way across. The powerful engines boot up and we fly off again. Or no, we, we don't. We wait for two crafts to get back on board and then we fly off. But, but believe me, we're gonna be flying off. And I don't know how much we're going to be sticking around in each... Okay, wh where's the last craft? I don't know how much we're going to be sticking around in each area because I definitely want to uh, get out of this place uh, very soon. Because it is... You're, if you're not careful, you're kind of getting trapped a little bit. Uh, we are still well over mass support here. I think it's because I took on a lot of ice and I'm trying to manage all of the energy rods on board that ship. But we do need to make sure that we don't become a, uh, a ship just holding on to goods. Uh, you know, like, the, the Starlighter is, is not a goods holding ship. It's just for food production, so we'll have to keep on top of that. And maybe have her make some plastic, or at least send over the materials to make plastic. I think we should get this carbon, obviously. Somebody's playing Frontier Expansion over there. It all, I always think that's a chapter heading. And I think doing some sort of auto-generated chapter heading or episode title or something, not just for my own you know, channel, but I just mean as a player. I, wouldn't that just be so fun if every so often you, the game is like, oh, we're headed into this phase. You know, it's called the, this is called the long dark. And maybe power is a problem for a couple of days. And then it's like, oh, the new chapter is like a stirring in the distance. And it's like, okay, so then some of the derelicts we go to are full of alien bugs, you know, stuff like that. You know, just uh, just fun stuff like that. Just fun, super dangerous stuff that makes the game even harder. You know, stuff like that. Let's go select all here and uh, no more. And then here we're going to have a bring here rule. And then this one we should have a, uh, yeah, just allowed. So hopefully we're going to get through some of the logistics here because it is an absolute nightmare, which leads me to believe that we do still need more logistics people over on this ship. And this ship is doing okay. It's kind of on top of its logistics. Kind of hard to tell. Storage full. Full of what? Various things. So I think we can actually transfer. We should transfer all of the... All of this... Uh, over to the Starlighter. So for for getting dealt with. Uh, we still have a, a composter. We have a couple of composters here. But we might as well just... Let's get rid of some of it. Um, over there. Uh... You know, we have a whole composting wing uh, over there. So let's at least do, let's let's keep, you know, 10 or something, 15. Uh, and we're getting some more stuff brought over, but it looks like, okay, we're low on veggies and meat. Uh, and we're doing good for, ve oh, we don't have a lot of veggies being made here. So let's go and r investigate that. 
What is going on here? We've got you on veggie. So this is all on veggies in the background here. And that's fruits and fruits as well. So let's go here and stop these and switch these over to vegetables for a while. Because for some reason, these are very easy to make, I guess. Now, this whole area is also making meat and seeds, I believe. So it's doing okay, but again, we are going through them fast. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that as well. And I guess I can turn this off while we do the mining. Okay, boys, continue the mining. Because Captain Annie runs a tight couple of ships and will be expecting us to move off shortly. We've been warned that an incoming solar flare could hit us at any moment, causing fires to break out across the ship, but no worries because, I mean, I don't know when it is going to be, but we're going to boot up our jump drives anyway. Put that to red alert. And we've just finished mining the last two pieces. So let's, I mean, hurry up, Wednesday. So let's get out of here as soon as we humanly can. One craft left, one person left, and Captain Annie orders us to jump, hopefully avoiding that solar flare that I wish would fill up the batteries rather than make them just combust. I'm not seeing too much except for a derelict vessel here we could explore uh, and some ice down here. It's been a while since we've gotten to uh, stretch our legs, so Captain Annie orders us out of warp. We unpause and then, uh, or I, we, we come out and then unpause because what I'm going to do here just to make sure we have control of at least two shuttles is hit those stop buttons so they can't be ordered on any missions. I'm going to take the red alert off of navigations here. And by missions, I of course mean friggin', uh, you know, little like jaunty missions to go run a couple of cashews over to the other ship. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's, it's important. And of course, we follow our rule and we get both teams ready to go here. This is a tiny little ship. It's not going to take that long to sort through. In fact, maybe we can do a pincer maneuver this time. I don't always recommend them. Uh, I am, especially for a player as bad at the game as me. But here we are. You know, do it. You know, we got to do it for the likes. So if you do like this maneuver, uh, make sure to you know give me lots of likes. <laughs> that was a very thirsty statement. But hey, you have to be sometimes. All right. The, uh, whatever this shuttle name is, the, uh, in-floor power node. <laughs> How do I click on the The 69th median. Uh, we're gonna have it, uh, we're gonna have her, uh, dock over here. And we're gonna work our way through the ship on both ends. So team two heads off to go do their jobs. And team one, the captain's team, hoping at least, she wouldn't admit it out loud, but she is hoping for at least a little bit of action. Her trigger finger has gotten just just a little too itchy. And Dr. Thumbs uh, ass assures her that it isn't that rash that she used to have. Assures her that it's just a little R&R &R that she needs. A little getting off the ship and a little perspective of seeing another ship that didn't do so well at all. Team 2 reports over the radio that they've found some bug contact, so Captain Annie is, of course, concerned, but hides that joy. And a little jealousy. She hasn't run into any of them. They find a decently stacked uh, kitchen slash barracks area. Team 2 again reports contact with bugs. Uh, Captain Annie finally sees one and lets fly with a couple of rounds. If only it was more, she thinks to herself. If only I could have just killed more things. Captain Annie looks like she's going to get her wish because sure sign of a holler in our midst. She orders Team 1 to go check that small room, but it's a little too late. Bad timing on her part. That's okay. She likes it a bit spicy. Okay, focus. No more storytelling. Just make sure you go. Oh, good lord. Cassia takes a big hit there. That's all right. Actually, we're going to order Team 2 up here and to just blast through this wall here. Cassia. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I wasn't paying attention. <gasps> oh my goodness, Captain Annie, what have you done? I say, except it was not her, it was me. It's because they the, the firing line was so bad. I thought they were going to take care of her and I wasn't paying attention. Oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> Cassia. Cassia, and wait, who else is down? Marie, what do you have here? You've got a monster bite and you're extremely fatigued. I mean, that's going to be fine, but my God, Cassia, we liked you. 
I like them all, don't get me wrong, but... That serves me right. It serves me right for not checking my fire lines. Oh my god, I feel terrible. That is not how you want to... Especially when you're playing the game on a... On a uh, you know, making a video of it. That is not how you want to watch somebody go. Oh, that is depressing. We're going to bring Cassio over here to the full shed. And these three things go over to the Starlighter. Oh my god, that is just heartbreaking. I'm going to turn this off here just in case because I don't want them to do any butchery. Uh, we let a hauler just kill her. Marie's going to be fine. She's got a bit of oxygen. She's just going to wake up and deal with herself. Oh no, we've got an incoming solar flare. Oh boy. That is not how you want an episode to go. Not with negligence. Not like this. And the, and the hall isn't even that great. There's some meat. Sure, fine. In fact, let's get that energy scrap since we're sitting here. Send it over to the full shed. And maybe some of that infra scrap because, uh, you know, infra blocks do get used. So we need to be careful with them. Now these ships, we're going to actually turn them on now so they can go do some other chores and, and ferry people back and forward to kind of speed this up here. Have we moved Cassia over? Not yet. This solar flare is going to hit at any point now and cause a lot of major problems for us. Oh, boy. Oh, what a thing. What a thing. The solar flare hits and maybe consume... I can see that the shields have taken a bit of a hit. And I see a couple of fires breaking out in this area here. So I'll close those vents and this area here should be containable. Um... 211. I don't know what that was. We took a, a power surge in this section, but it doesn't seem too bad. So we're going to close this vent here. And we're going to close off this section here. Oh, we already had it closed off. Wow. Okay. Well, I should probably open that up after. Uh, at any rate, we're going to have to deal with that. I think I'm going to let people just deal with it. It looks like the fire... Oh, yeah. The fire kind of... Well, the fire just sort of burned itself out in this area. This area is going to cause a problem. And I wonder if at some point in, in, in future updates, maybe not Alpha 12, but, you know, there'll be an issue where this could cause explosions if we're not careful and just take out a big chunk of the ship out because you definitely don't want, like, your refinery to be burning for too long. All right, so the power node has taken a bit of a failure here, so we do need to assign somebody to repair that. Uh, Kathy, do we have anybody with a good repair maintenance skill? Miles, so we're going to pull him off of fire duty and get him to repair this power node so we can keep our power. But but thankfully, the redundancy of my circuit design, however brilliant or un, unbrilliant you may think it is, this web, this complicated web here, is keeping the ship up and running quite nicely. We don't need this. I've turned this off of logistics because now we're getting a solar output of uh, 95.6. So things seem to be back to normal a little bit. But definitely, it'll definitely affect things if you're too far away from that tiny little star. The fires from the solar bear flare have been put out. But the fire of my own disappointment with my own management of my own team remains very much alive. Ugh, I can't believe I let her die like that. What an, what an easy and avoidable death. And no, I'm not going to save scum. Why, you ask? Well... I don't know. <laughs> because it just seems... It just seems like, listen, space is dangerous and that can happen. And it's just a good reminder to me as a player of this game that I must always be vigilant. Even when I think I've overpowered an enemy with my sheer numbers, I have to remember that those numbers are characters that we know and love. Cassia, we, you know, kind of liked her. Lori, in the meantime helped move her body. And Lori, a recent convert to the ship, sees an opportunity to uh, upgrade her status on board the ship. Lori walks up to uh, Captain Annie over here, uh, who is... Lori walks up to Captain Annie over here, who is busy disassembling a thing, and and says, Hey, can I have a word with you? And, Lori, and Captain Annie says, What? I'm busy right now. She's like, Well... Listen, I, I heard what happened to Cassia, and, and I know that, uh, you know, obviously you don't want to fill the role right away. That's not what you're thinking about right now. You're just thinking about how sad you are that Cassia got so easily killed by just standing in a doorway for ten minutes while an alien ate her legs. 
And Captain Eddie goes, yes, I know. I know I didn't command my team well. What do you want? So she was like, well, I'll take a beating. Can I, can I join the team? Maybe it's too early to ask. And maybe I feel a bit rude. And then Captain Annie, all of a sudden, she's like, yep, that's great. Thanks. All right, everybody. Lori here with her 25% accuracy. I mean, it's higher when she's not wearing a spacesuit. I'll show you. <laughs> it's like 50 something, 59. She joins our team with a weapons rating of three. She is now part of the captain's shooting team. Lori, you're going to want to change that uh, outfit, though. Customize. We're going to get the red of... Wait, is that the... Wait, what, uh, what is Captain Annie wearing? Does she not have better pants? Customize. Oh, I see. Red and blue pants. Wait, what's the... Okay, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Lori, don the red pants. Or, I mean, the blue pants and the red... Uh, and the red shirt of Team One. Welcome aboard. Now get back to work. Lori salutes her and heads off. Going to get... I don't know, her choice of gun from the gun locker. We move on from that fateful sector looking for something else to make it all seem worthwhile, and I tell you this, we're not seeing much. So a quick circle around the horn gets us into this section with a little bit of gold and ice, and we drop momentarily out to go and get it. Day 312, and we're leaving this sector, stripping of it, uh, it of its resources. Although I don't know if you can call that resources, I mean, it's just got... It's just, oh, it's a siren world. Or no, that's a nebula and a derelict. We move on. We just want to get out of this stinky place. Sure, it has a civilian outpost and a, just a metric ton of ships, but I don't know what they're doing out here in the place that killed Cassia. As you can tell, I have a lot of disdain for the place that killed Cassia. And we have a lot of jumps ahead of us to get all the way around the horn here. And I would like to move on and go take a look at this Baron and see what his deal is. I mean, I don't know how I feel about Barons. Do we Do we even like Barons? Sounds kind of like a negative name. And I feel like I'm, and my crew, uh, or Captain Annie's crew, I guess, are going to have a very poor reaction to a Baron who takes kindly to slavers. Our resolve grows stronger knowing that Cassia paid the ultimate price for my ignorance. <laughs> and we can be ignorant no longer. We will stop slavery in the universe. Very quickly, we were able to uh, get all of those materials on board, and we're getting ready for the long jump ahead. I don't know if they do logistics while we're jumping. Uh, oh, actually, while we have Lori right here, let's draft her and not forget to get her uh, her weapon. There we are. I think she has... Okay, I'll show you. 53% uh, accuracy. So again... Oh, let's uh, do this again. So again, not ideal accuracy, but with a shotgun and a weapons training of three, she has a much higher chance of getting some good hits. So, Lori, welcome aboard. You've got some big shoes to fill. Now, the main jump, yeah, we're going to have to go all the way around here, all this stuff that we've explored already to get to the Baron. And I hope it's worth it. Oh, whoops, what's happening? Oh, we're dropping in. I clicked on the wrong button. Listen, this is the kind of not paying attention, just trying to at least say stuff interestingly. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff that got Cassia killed, so I need to pay attention this time and not lose any more crew, stupidly. All right, now we take to warp again. And now, okay, this is that's working better. We do have 24 jumps because we're not quite mass supported, but I think that should get us easily into the next sector. And I was looking at our stores across all of our vessels. We have no Hyperium left. We have a lot of hyperfuel. Uh, go to uh, the entire fleet has 76 hyperfuel, but no, uh, only two uh, Hyperium left. Something to keep in mind, to be sure. So we drop into the. Embark on interstellar travel and hyperspace might cause nausea. Okay, yeah, I don't think that that's changed. Uh, I just wanted to make sure. You never know with Space Haven. So we're going to have a little nausea coming out of hyper, uh, coming out of uh, this long journey. Uh, but again, you know, uh, it's just, it is what it is. We don't have the ability or the energy rods to put that many people into a hypersleep. I don't even know where I'd put those at this point in these kinds of ships. I think that does make it more important to have like three three ships at least in your design maybe even more maybe you need uh maybe you need a lot of little ships that are all self-sufficient i don't know fewer shuttle bays fewer uh um uh, 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 uh hod pangers 
You know, fewer, like, I guess the way, if you fly without hypersleep chambers, it lets you do things like more hull stabilizers. It lets you double up on your storage space and all that, and, and then be kind of greedy with your hallways, which uh, I do love a good greedy hallway. <laughs> all right, the team jumps. Uh, they're not quite ready. We're missing somebody. I'm not sure what, somebody ran a quick uh, delivery, I guess, over to the other ship. And I'm reading 21 crew. Okay, there they are. All right. So we take to the stars once more, getting closer to wherever this Baron might be. We're in his section, section, sector now. And so far, it seems kind of peaceful. A little bit of ice and some carbon. We'll stop by and get that. But so far, I haven't really seen where he might be. We jump down a sector here. We see nothing but a nebula, some more ice, which is always good, and some uh, base metals. I'm thinking maybe it's a good idea to switch around my advanced assembler for a basic assembler and start building some hull blocks and infra blocks and things that we can sell. Uh, I think that would be worth it. I don't think that we want to be making too many high-level stuff. I mean, let's think about that. So we have 88-ish base metals and a lot of carbon. We could be making tech blocks and energy blocks but we to do that we need energy cells and optronics components now i believe those are made we might we could get rid of the cell fuser maybe and uh make some other stuff here or the chemical refinery rather it does make explosive ammunition useful it does make plastic also useful let's make a bunch more plastic actually and what if we go back to our plan of being arms suppliers. I think the rich Baron might very well enjoy himself some arms. <laughs> so let's go ahead and make a bunch of plastic. Uh, let's make, uh, you know, 20 plastic. And let's get this thing uh, taken apart. And we're going to make some more steel plates with it and get ready to make some guns. I think that's a decent, you know, these three uh, pieces of equipment are needed to make that. And uh, that's a decent workflow at a decent output of product. Hopefully, I don't know if it's worth it, though. Uh, we'll have to do the math and see if we can actually get a better price for finished firearms than we can for just selling plastic and steel plates. Micrometeoroids are incoming, but that's no problem for us because we've maintained red alert this whole time on navigation. Is it the best idea? No, but it does allow us to be fairly uh, mobile so we can jump out of this sector here. And wait, hang on, we're missing three crafts. So I'd like to get out of here before micrometeoroids cause any hull breaches. Like that. Uh, but those are just the crafts. So they'll need to get repaired, but that's fine. That's not the end of the world. We just need to make sure the last one is in, and we can jump out of this place. Day 313 in the Baron's territory. Uh, coming down here is okay. Hasn't shown us too much. Now, this is a good area. I would love some Hyperium, though. I'll tell you that much. We're going to need to find the Baron for that. But I will take these raw chemicals and uh, this uh, uh, the gold in there and even uh, some Energium. So that's not a bad haul at all. Let's send that over to the Fourchette. Let's send it all over the full ship because we're going to use these chemicals, I think, in the making of the of the plastic that we want. Now, the shotguns are one and one. So one plastic and one steel plate makes a shotgun. Let's make five. Let's make ten of those and let's make five assault rifles just so that when we run into the Baron, not only are we armed to the teeth, uh, but we also can make some nice sales. Over in the prison area here, I'm just going to take a look. Rosemary, we've been trying to convert her for a long time. Can we return sold to the following faction through hailing? Okay, very cool. The following faction react negatively when they find out about them being on board your ship, of course. So this little info tab is pretty great. However, um, I am just, like, she's been enslaved here for 51 days. So back around day 260, we took Rosemary. And she has still not joined us. I, I almost think that the others are going to join before she does. So uh, we definitely want we definitely want Scrotes to join. So we're gonna get Paul recruiting here, and uh, maybe even just all of them. Let's just get let's just get to all of them, and see what's going on here. But I'm kind of thinking that Rosemary, who's been with us for so long and not converted for so long, maybe she needs to take the, a quick uh, space bath, if you know what I mean. The engines begin to power up one last time. And then another shout out to Bugbite for that design work. 
I just love how great things are coming along and how cool things look. Like the way that all those little like tiny little jet streams start to power up. It looks very, very cool. Logistics stay overwhelmed. Even though we're not trading a lot, the Starlighter is still having a logistics problem, which I believe uh, leads me to believe that uh, we need some more staff over there. So I'm thinking I'm going to send some people over there and maybe it's time to think about their uniforms as well. Okay, so... I think I need to go uh, where, okay, that one goes down there. Where are my other options? So this little tiny star over here, which I've, I could, I guess I could explore on the way back. We're already up here. So we might as well go forward and see if the Baron is up in this far star system up here. Let's go find out. So we jet into the faraway system and we come across some androids. Not exactly our favorite folks. We don't need the ice in this nebula area. So we're just kind of going to explore for a second. That Hyperium draws me to the north. Uh, yeah, this feels good here. Now, what's that? I don't think I've seen that before. Oh, I guess I have. Yeah, I guess. Okay, I just... Maybe it's because there isn't a shadow on it. It looks like some kind of different planet. But let's uh, mine this area out for sure. Unfortunately, I realized why the shields were both over there, and it's because I forgot the metal refinery is quite large. In fact, it should almost have its own room, um, you know, which we're just going to do for now, just for fun. You know, we got to do some building. I, I, I miss building. So we're going to toss in a uh, thing here, and actually, no, we're going to delete this one, and we're going to toss in a double door. Bang, why not? Uh, wrong tool. There we go. So we're going to toss in a double door here. Uh, how do I get... Okay, <laughs> I'm playing I'm playing with other, t other tools here. Uh, you know, like, one of the tools not being my brain. And let's get some storage laid down here. So this is a semi... Semi? Semi-permanent construction in this area. I wonder if we could actually move the, uh... This, uh, item fabricator over here as well. Uh, we could... Uh, no, we can't. Um... We could put it over, uh, we, if we didn't put storage there, we could put it uh, nearby, but uh, no. You know what? It's fine for now. Uh, it's fine like that. So we're going to get this built up just so we can do some more things with the power, uh, with the refinery here. Uh, but on board the Starlighter, we ha uh, on board the uh, Fourchette, we have made a few of, of the shotguns, but not a great amount of progress here. So, uh... Okay, so some folks are working on it. Let's assign somebody to do something here. Gabby? Gabby. Yeah, there you are. Gabby, go get that. Go get the plastics for us. Thank you very much. In the meantime, I think we should send Bevin, uh, Brevin over to the other ship. Uh, so we're going to go over here and uh, assign Brevin once we find him up here. I think it's, uh, yeah, mostly... Um, <sighs> done by, you know, letters. Letters? Abbreviation? What's the word for when you organize something by letters? <laughs> I don't know. I can't think. I can't think because I'm so mad about losing uh, Cassia the way we did. Um, I think the night shift has fewer people, so we're going to copy over the night shift settings and get Brevin on that. Now, one thing this makes me think about, though, too, is I wish, I, I wish we could get everybody looking like Brevin. I really like that that look, but I don't think... Oh, we do have white shirts. <gasps> Amazing. So we're going to go white shirts, and let's go like green pants on board this, this ship. That's going to look awesome. So we're going to do that to all the crew here, except for the doctor and the command crew. And that's basically going to be uh, just the best. All right. The crew has been uh, carefully uh, um, coordinated. And now it looks like even more of a cohesive ship. I just love walking, every, watching everybody walk around. We've got Dr. Aura, who is, of course, our doctor and a botanist. We've got Charon, who is, uh, doesn't do much botany. He does a lot of the building around the ship. But he's also a, a weapons specialist who's quite charming. Everybody loves sleeping with Charon. <laughs> Anyway, he is our security uh, officer on board the ship, and Owen has been co uh, promoted to commander of the vessel, as he has the best navigations uh, skill and um, not much botany skill. So he doesn't have much else to do except for pilot the ship and run the ship and just generally keep everyone happy. To that end, I think we're going to make this one uh, Owen's bed. We're going to give our security officer this one over here. Uh, occupant, uh, Charon. Let's get him a bed. And I think there's another single room. Oh my goodness. Whoa, these rooms are very nice. Never mind. Let's, uh, 
hang on, let's let's make this Owen's bed. And let's make this uh, Dr. Aura's bed. That leaves us with this room that's open. And I think we should give it to one of the, uh, oh, uh, you know, one of the um, longtime uh, crew members. So let's give that one to Aurelia. And so they, we now know that they have all their beds. And we have a little barracks here that can just be used by whoever. And two more beds over here. We might need to make that a few more beds in a bit. But for now... Hopefully, we can get on top of some of the logistics on board the Starlighter, although it's looking better, but not a lot better. Owen and Annie order us to warp. It's day 3.15 three now, and we're still looking for the Baron. Can't really see him. I'm actually just going to sneak forward one spot here. And what do we have here? Android Collective and Military Alliance. So we, uh, yeah, so he's not there. We're trying to look for this uh, Baron's space station so we can do some trade or at least find out if he's a worthy adversary. And in the meantime, let's get this, uh, all of these very necessary resources. Oh my goodness. I haven't seen that much energium in a long time. And that's a decent supply of water as well. Okay, so I don't feel too bad about that. Uh, let's actually make sure this gets sent over to the Starlighter. Perfect. Day 316 now, and we are heading out looking for this Baron. Hopefully he has some wares for us. Is this him here? Merchant Federation, no. Let's skip over these chemicals and keep looking. Uh, perhaps he's either down here, and we just missed him. Okay, well, we gotta go look then. Uh, we're using up a lot of hyperfuel actually to do this. How much hyperfuel do I have? Uh, over the entire fleet, I have 70, so that's not bad, and 22. Okay, so I don't feel too bad. So we can come down here and cut across. We found another derelict vessel. Derelict, we take a look at it? I think so. Captain Annie is in no mood today, so she sounds the alarm and asks for each fire team, all the fire teams, to report for duty and load into their shuttles. Not taking any chances this time, she has ordered them to dock right outside one hole in the ship. The plan, according to Captain Annie, is to make no mistakes whatsoever. And she orders the entire team to unload and full broadside the ship. If we can't, if we can't get ourselves some uh, decent, oh my goodness, a hauler. Everyone's floating around, letting the hauler just kind of have its way with Frank. We've gotta be careful here and make sure that it gets shot, good. Okay, now this team here, which team is that? Team three uh, needs to move out. Okay, so that was a pretty stunning entrance for all of the fire teams, for all of my stormtroopers, and a very enjoyable way to go. If we can't find the Baron, then we're at least going to come in here with all our fury and remove the bug presence from this entire universe. Yeah, that's right. Bla just blast clean through the door. You know what? We're not even using doors anymore, okay? From now on, we're just going to be, like, blasting our way through the walls. Okay, no more m mincing words here. No more uh, trying to use doors and, you know, asking if it's okay if we can uh, maybe possibly stop the aliens from killing people like Cassia. Blast that wall. Yes, good work. Storm in, all you stormtroopers. Now, see, now this would have been great had we found the Baron. Uh, this would have been a nice way to... Uh, uh, really wrap this episode up with a big stormtrooper burst from uh, from all of our team, including an alive Cassia. All right, so far, I mean that one hauler was all we had to deal with, but that's that's not that bad. Everyone's doing okay. Gabby's taking a couple of good bites, though. We do need to be careful here. Um, we don't want Gabby to take so much damage that you know we lose anybody else for another dumb reason. All right, we come down this hallway, worried that we're gonna find bugs at any second. Yeah, just keep going. I know we said we weren't gonna use doors, but it's kind of hard to shoot the wall when you, when it's like blocked uh, like this, like you can't see it. Pop that door open and let them have it. Okay, good work. The MAS Please Don't Explode has been explored. We undraft everybody here, except for Captain Annie, who will return over here. And let's take a look at our hall. Oops. Okay, you know, not amazing, but again, not terrible. If this was an earlier game ship, I would be so happy for all of that food. But right now, not so happy. 
All I'm thinking about is how many crew members we could have saved if I had made better decisions all along the way. Captain, and he pops into their med bay to go and open up this uh, hypersleep chamber. Operates it. Okay, do it. <laughs> and out pops Vaughn. Vaughn or Cassia the <laughs> Second. Industry 2, Weapons 3, Navigation 3, Accuracy 40% inside a spacesuit. So Vaughn might end up being a very good addition to the shooty team. So he's going to remain on the uh, fourchette. We're going to give him a... Uh, let's go find Vaughn here. Let's get, let's copy uh, let's copy that one. So Vaughn is a very welcome addition to the team, and uh, they've also decided him to, decided to call him uh, Cass Cassia Cassia the second. <laughs> In honor of Cassia, you shall be named Cassia too. There, that's good. That fits. All in all. A tough episode. A lot of fun things happened, though. We did do a little bit of uh, reworking of some things. We are now a very impressive weapons manufacturing uh, hub on board this ship. I think this whole move here uh, is helping us with our logistics. But unfortunately, the uh, the uh, the, bi the Baron remains ever elusive. Will we find him? Hopefully in the next episode. And hopefully... We have something to sell him. We can make a nice tidy profit. And I need to get some of these prisoners to be won over. Otherwise, I do need to consider maybe... Listen. Yeah, of course we don't want slavery. Okay? But maybe... I don't know where they... Is it storage? No. Airlock system? Uh, where is it? Uh, I guess what I'm saying is like, yeah, nobody should, you know, make anybody work, you know, against their will. Uh, but... You know, it's okay if, you know, we do. Because we have the best intentions is what I'm saying. So maybe we build one. Do you know what I mean? And maybe we we, we learn, we, we, we teach Rosemary that uh, it, it's better to join us than it is not to join us. <laughs> Are we headed down a dark path? Perhaps. I certainly hope not. But it may be necessary. Because the logistics over on this ship are just not getting dealt with. Everyone gathers near the airlock, and uh, unfortunately, we were not able to find the Baron. Uh, but we were able to get ourselves into a fair amount of trouble. Trouble, unfortunately, that uh, cost us the life of Cassia. And so we... Uh, oh, wait. Uh, sorry. And so we uh, eject. <laughs> there. And uh, we're going to get Dr. Thumbs to do that. So we're going to draft our job here. Logistics, assign that to Dr. Thumbs. <clears throat> Captain Annie steps forward here. Hopefully you found this to be some truly solid content. Unfortunately, Cassia found it to be her end. And so Captain Annie says farewell to one of her good friends and her teammates. Oh, it's much more sad now that the, uh, the icon has changed to be a body in a body bag. <laughs> and so, like so many of the crew before them, we commit Cassia to the inky blackness of space. May she forever find rest among the pot-marked moon, I suppose that is? Well, I imagine she'll orbit it for a few hundred years and then eventually burn up in whatever atmosphere it has. <sighs> Sadly, that is the reality in space. Captain Annie orders everyone back to their bunks, back to work. She takes one last look out the window that we're going to have soon once Alpha 12 is released. She sees the hum of the ship continue. Everybody's working. Almost like nothing happened, but Captain Annie knows the truth. Captain Annie knows she led another crew member to her end. And so she heads off to bed. Maybe tomorrow will be better. Maybe the Baron will... Oh, maybe she's going to space herself. Oh, no, no, she's going for a little trip. That's fine. <laughs> But maybe tomorrow will be better. And maybe your tomorrow is going to be better. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And we'll see you all in the next episode of whatever it is that we decide to play.